just coming in and declaring that over your life and just declaring that into the atmosphere. Let me tell you, it changes everything. Just, and it's not about feelings. Okay, yes, you feel good and it's all, all wonderful. But you're actually declaring the word and the truth of God. And let me tell you, you, you guys should all take a snapshot of that and, and have it in your, um, on your phones and everywhere. And just be speaking that over yourselves every single day. And I promise you, you will see it. Hallelujah, because now is the time. Now is the time, as Pastor Lucinda said earlier on, as she got up during the way, she said, you know, we've got to rise up. Amen. We need to rise up as the church. It is our responsibility. What happens here in OC, what happens in California, uh, the U.S. and beyond, it's our responsibility, the church, and it's our time, and we need to rise up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're here. So that's my wonderful wife, Esther. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she deserves that. Uh, not because she has to put up with me, but because she's so awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, praise God. And the Lord, what, about five years ago, six years ago, uh, called us out to Greece and we work with Keith Butler Ministries, who's out of Detroit, um, Southfield, Detroit. And he sent us out to Greece, and we we based there right now, even though California's home. Uh, we based there right now. We have an awesome church in Athens. We have a Bible school there. We've just started a new church in Corinth, the very same Corinth that you read about in the in in the Bible. We've just started and planting a church there. So praise God. We need your prayers because we're dealing with the same issues that Paul dealt with. It's so funny because, you know, we, we use our graduates. We have a Bible school there and we use our graduates. So whoever graduates, well, not everybody, but a lot of them, we, we use them and we send them out. So we got graduates. Uh, we send this, the, the couple out there to Corinth and they, you know, um, starting the work there. And he, he's calling me as Pastor George. I'm like, Read Corinthians. Keep reading Corinthians. Come on. You've got the answer because you're dealing with the same stuff. But praise God. Uh, we will have the victory. Amen. So we got that. Um, we also sent another uh, couple out to Poland. We have a new, uh, well, it's not new. It's about a year now. In Poland, in Katowice, which is southwest Poland. And we're doing some work there. And we're going to be starting a Bible school in the fall over there for uh, Polish-speaking uh, believers. Amen. We also do a lot of work in France. Every month I'm there ministering in Marseille and in Paris. And every week we do a French Bible study online for all the French-speaking uh, nations around the world. God really put France on our heart. Amen. Uh, what else do we do? We, we're in England. We're in Belgium. We've got friends in Bulgaria uh, that we support, and we also got friends in Ukraine. Amen. We've connected with Bishop Vitali from uh, Ukraine, and uh, my bishop, Bishop Keith Butler, has been going there, and, you know, we've just been doing great works together and throughout Europe. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So... You know what? Let me tell you something. The Ukrainians know how to do church. Okay. So, yes. Uh, and they, they had to leave Ukraine. A lot of people had to leave Ukraine because of the persecution and because of what was happening. And, and they went throughout Europe. And everywhere they've gone, they've planted churches. And there's this great network of Ukrainian churches and Russian-speaking churches around, uh, around Europe. And praise God, we've been plugged into that. So we also pouring in and helping there. So next Saturday, it's really important that we all go out and we all support. So I don't want to say if you can, because that's a nice way of saying it. Block out that time. Get up and go. Make the effort. People's lives are at stake. We're in that place right now where we can't play anymore. We can't play the church anymore. We need to be the church. And we need to stand up and we need to rise up and we need to be the church. This is a, an event where we can now speak and go and reach people who are stuck in orthodoxy and stuck in religion. Uh, you know, in Greece, that's the religion over there. It's orthodox, 99% orthodox. I mean, there's 0 .0, 0 0.02% percent people that are saved. And that's for most of Europe. Okay, it's, it's hard. 
it's a hard ground, but it's also fertile and it's ripe and it's, it's there. It's not like here in America. It's so wonderful in America. You've got churches everywhere. You've got believers everywhere. You can talk about God to absolute strangers over there. They look at you like you're a heretic. So it's important next week for everybody just to go on Saturday, gather together, and reach out as a family. Let them see us. Let them know, hey, there's people that care about you. There's people that, that for your future, and, you know, we give them a hope and a future. Amen. So I better start talking about what I wanted to talk about. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, that we are here. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. This really just came up in my spirit. It's a verse that we all know, okay? It's a verse that is very familiar. And recently, I've been reading the Passion Translation. My goodness, what a, a great translation. If you have the Bible app, you version, it's, it's in there. And this guy has, has opened it up, and he's just... You know, really, he's, a, he's a, a student of the Word. He's a scholar. He's a you know, great thinker. And he's just opened it up from, from the original, original. He's like showing the Aramaic and the Greek and the, and the Hebrew. He's coming with the Old Testament. It's not there yet. I just got Word. Amen. So uh, I've been reading this Passion Translation. And, you know, I just stumbled onto it a few months ago. And it's just opened up the Word for me. So especially for you guys that have been saved for Years and years and years and years, praise God. We've read the Bible, read the Bible. Do yourself a favor. Read the Passion, just re read the Passion Translation. It will open up new truths to you. So that's not it. But anyway, in the Passion Translation, it says, For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. Amen. So we know God will never give you, oh, there it is. Okay. For God will never give you the spirit of fear. So I want to talk about that today because it's rising up again. There's a lot of things that are happening where we are seeing a lot of changes in society. We are seeing a lot of um, shifts that are not right. We are seeing a lot of decisions being made, and not only in America, Around the world, okay, we are the church. We're not just the church of America. We are the church for the world. Remember that. We've got to get our focus out. I mean, you, you heard Pastor Jerry just talk about what we're doing in South Africa. And when I say we, it's we. Because, yeah, there might be happening there, but it's part of our family. Amen. And so, you know, th th thousands of souls getting saved. We, we've got to have, have that focus. And there's a lot that is happening that is bringing Fear that is bringing fear and is bringing confusion. And we've got to recognize when that there is fear, it's not of God. For God will never give us a spirit of fear. So anything that is of fear is not of God. So I just, I'm just going to go, uh, what's it, uh, uh, religi religiosity 101 or Christianity 101, not religion, we don't like religion. Um, Christianity 101. If it's a fear, it's not of God. If it's fear, it's the devil. If it's fear, it's a lie. If it's the devil, it's a lie. Okay. Now, we can't believe the lie, and we've got to be so vigilant not to buy in to the lie, not to buy into looking at situations and circumstances and thinking it's hopeless, thinking there's nothing I can do. There's nothing for me. There's, it's just too big. No, 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 no. The Word of God says the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, a righteous man is a believer. A righteous person is a believer. We are all the righteousness of God. And we mentioned that earlier on. We are the righteousness of God. We are in right standing. And because we are in right standing, we have access to the throne room. We have access to all of heaven. And we can now manifest heaven here on earth. So anything that is against heaven, anything that doesn't line up with the word of God, anything that doesn't line up with truth, we have now access to heaven because we are the righteousness. By faith, we access heaven and we manifest heaven here on earth where we can now change situations and circumstances. Amen. 
It's time for us not to just look and say, oh no, well, I'm going to heaven, so all right, let me see who else I can tell. It's time for us now to say, you know what? I'm going to heaven, you've got to come with me. I'm going to heaven, you've got to come with me. I'm connected to heaven, and therefore I'm going to bring heaven down on earth. Amen. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that how Jesus taught us to pray? His disciples said, hey, please teach us to pray. We don't know how to pray. And that's a good thing. Nobody came out of the womb knowing how to pray, right? I don't know if you did, please share with me. But I, I haven't met that person yet. So we need to learn how to pray. So it's a valid question. How do I pray? And Jesus gave us the model prayer. That's what it says in my Bible. The model prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Anyway, in that prayer, it says, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. For Jesus to say, let it be on earth as it is in heaven, it means it's possible. It means that's what the desire of God. That's God's heart. That's what God wants. That's God's plan. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. My faith reaches into heaven, accesses the promises, accesses the truth, and bam, manifests it down here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. And we've got to start doing that. Too often the church is looking at things and saying, me and mine are fine. I don't know about the rest. Well, you know what? Come to church on Sunday. Wonderful. But how many people are coming to church on Sunday, what we need to do, and I heard, a, I read a great testimony last night. I don't know where they are. Oh, where's, where's Ryan and Missa? Okay, anyway, so, huh? Are they in children's church? Praise God. God bless them. So Nissa put up a testimony last night. I don't know if you guys follow Nissa on, the, on Facebook. So I was looking through Facebook last night just to make sure that, because we do the sermon in Greece and it's 10 hours behind, and I just want to make sure that it loaded and all of that, and it's there, and it's running, and everything's going on, and... I came across this, she put a banner over there, and she says, testimony, I love it, I love testimonies, I love testimonies, testimonies are so powerful, and she says, they do a, a worship night once a month at their house, right, so I don't know, they gather get together, and they worship, and she was coming home this week, and a lady stopped her, and said to her, do you have, like, a choir in there? Do you, uh, does a choir gather at your house? Do, 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 do you have, like, singing and stuff like that, or so?" And she says, yes, yes, you do. She says, I was riding by on my bicycle the one night, and it sounded like angels. And I stopped, and where I was, I encountered God. <laughs> I encountered God right there. She had a life-changing um, experience outside their window with nobody having to do it. Just because they were being faithful, just because they were in their house, they worshiping God, they praising God, the power of God, hallelujah, because He has not given us the spirit of fear, but He's given us the Holy Spirit who gives us mighty power, amen. The power of God that we have gives us love, that's our motivation, and self-control. We're not going to freak out, mm. amen. So because they were, they were worshiping, this lady got saved, this lady had an encounter, okay, what you do matters. What you do in your private, because they were doing it in their private, come on, <laughs> has consequences outside, has consequences in your life. What you do ma matter. What you, what you do matters. Yeah, that's right English. What you does matters. No, what you do matters. Amen. So we got to understand that that's who we are. We can't let fear stop us. I'm not afraid of man. We can't be afraid of man. I don't care what anybody else thinks. You know, you've got a pastor who's a perfect example of that. Amen. I've been in situations and circus, praise God. I've been in situations and circumstances where I'm like, Dude, what did you say? <laughs> Why? I'm like, you know, being all proper and prim and, you know, and, and he's just like being real. And he's telling people, hey, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. You have heard the gospel. You've got to make a choice right now. Amen. And we've got, to get, we've got to be bold like that. We can't let fear stop us. We can't let the devil tell, tell us, well, what are they going to think of you? Well, what are they going to say? Well, you might lose business. Well, you might lose friends. Well, you might do this. Well, 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 nothing. Okay. The Word of God tells me, and this is what I'm going to live by, and this is what I'm going to follow, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what God tells me me to do, how God tells me to do it. God tells me to love. Okay, I'm going to love on people. What's the greatest, um, not experience of love, but outpouring of love? What is it? It's sharing the word of God with somebody else. That's the greatest act of love, is sharing the word of God 
with somebody else. And we've got to start thinking like that. We've got to start being people-minded. Because there's millions, if not billions of people right now that are going to hell in a handbasket, as they say. You know, and it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility as the church. We can't just be inward-minded or self-focused. What about me, me, me? Okay, I've got my stuff under control. Yes, Lord, and I'm praying for me. And that's okay. You need to be sorted out. And praise God, you have the blessing of the Lord that will help you, that will bless you, and will sort you out. But you know what? It's more than just about you. It's more than just about you. There's other people waiting on you. There's other people waiting on your breakthrough. There's other people waiting on your boldness. There's other people waiting on you to, to, to put aside your fear, to put aside your shame, to put aside the, whatever rubbish that is stopping you for you to go and tell them. You know, like God's really been convicting us. So we in Greece, right? And we speak Greek, but it's not our first language. It's not, you know, we, speak, we, we think in English and we, we speak in English. And there's a lot of Greek words we just don't understand. So you're sitting in a conversation and I'm good if I, if I understand 50% of the words. Uh, I'm like, I'm happy. <laughs> Especially in the Christian, in the religious conversations. And so, you know, going out and speaking to people on the streets, it's a little bit harder. Because, you know, we've got to find words and we've got to go and we can be basic. And then they come back at us with, da 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 And we're like, huh? What did you ask? What? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, how am I going to? But you know what? The Lord said, George, that, you can't let that stop you. You can't let that stop you. You've got to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit. It's not by might. Amen. Amen. It's not by might or by strength. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's by the Spirit of God that we are going to do what we need to do and we are going to be who God's called us to be. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you from anything. From anything. Trust in God. Connect with God. Hear from God. Receive from God. And walk it out. Walk it out. God's told you some great things. God, 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 He's told you, all of you have got some things inside of you that you haven't done yet because you're afraid. What happens if it fails? What happens if it doesn't work out? What happens if this? What, you know, we start going through all of this questioning and self doubt. Get rid of the doubt. Get rid of the doubt and get in step into faith. Faith, you know, then works and and actions what you believe. And that's why it's very important as to what you believe. Fear is an indicator of something you don't believe. Okay. If you're afraid of getting sick, it's because you don't believe that by his stripes you've been healed. Because if you believe by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed, I'm not scared of getting sick. I'm really not scared of getting sick. If sickness comes, I'm not saying it won't come. Praise God, it doesn't come. But if it comes, I'm not afraid. Because by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. If you're afraid of losing all your money and having nothing, you don't believe that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. You're like, well, what about, no. Or it says in the tithe, give. And I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you cannot contain it. Oh, that's the truth. And that's why most people don't give. That's why most people don't tithe. <laughs> the Lord gave me that revelation about six months ago. And I stood in front of my church and I told him that. I said, if you don't tithe, it's because you don't believe. There's no other reason. There's no other reason that you're not giving. Because if you believed, you know everything's going to be okay. Because if you believed, you know that that's what you're going to see. What you believe is what you're going to receive. That's what the Word of God says. So we've got to check our believing. Fear is an indicator of something I don't believe. So when fear comes, okay, and it does come, you're not a bad person because fear comes. It's what you do with the fear when it does come. Are you going to allow it to rent out space in your brain, in your mind, in your thoughts, in your stuff? Or are you going to cast it out with the Word of God? 
You're going to go to the Word of God and see what the Word of God says, what the Word of God says about the situation, and then receive that and believe that and walk it out. See, it's not a matter of faith. It's because we've all been given faith, right? You've all been given a measure of faith, right? Everybody in here, that's what the Word of God says. We've all been given a measure of faith. And as our drummer, because I can't remember your name, (laughs) <laughs> said earlier on, hey, we've got that faith and that faith can grow. Amen. Praise God. And that faith grows when you start doing the things of God. But we've all got faith. The Word of God says it only takes the faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed. So there's not a lot of faith that I need to change the world. But what do I believe? What is my faith working with? It takes faith the size of a mustard seed to change, but it can only change if my believing is right. Because, the, and that's why we're not seeing results. I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, I'm tired of having prayers and praying things and not seeing results. When God says there's 7,000 things, promises in the word of God, some people say 8,000. Praise God, I'll take 8,000. <laughs> and they're there. A promise of God is a fact of God. It's there. It's for you. The reason we are not seeing more breakthrough, the reason we are not seeing our prayers answered, it's not because of faith. And unfortunately, in our circles, because we walk in faith circles, for a long time we've been taught, oh, we don't have enough faith. You don't have enough. Oh, I do. Because I only need a good faith the size of a mustard seed. And everybody's been given a measure of faith. Uh, has been given, it doesn't say a measure, it says the measure. You've been given the measure of faith. So you've been given faith. You've got faith the size. Okay, so my faith is good. Your faith activates what you believe and manifests it into your life. Amen. But if you're believing wrong, you're going to receive wrong. You're not going to get the right results. In order to get the right results, we need to start believing right. We need to start getting the word. We need to clear out what I heard in kindergarten. We need to clear out what my grandfather told me, my grandmother, my mother, or something I heard last year. We need to clear that out that it, or something that touched me emotionally because a lot of us are basing our faith on other people's experiences. A lot of our, our faith is experience faith instead of word faith. Oh, well, look, it happened for them. Maybe it's going to happen for me. We can't live with maybes. Maybe, maybe. No, I don't want maybe. I want certainty. We need certainty. As human beings, we were created by God to need certainty in our life. And praise God, He gave it to us. He gave it to us. We can be sure. We can be sure that the Word of God, this is not my iPhone, this is the Word of God. The Word of God will work every day time. The Word of God will never fail. Amen. Every time. time. Amen. But I'm not saying this to make you feel good. I'm saying this that you can take this, put it into your life, live it out, and see the difference, and then be the difference. See the blessing and be the blessing, because that's what we are called to be. Next week, we want to get all of these these Slavs saved and turned around. They're going to look at you. You're going to say, what have you got that I don't? That's what the world does. What have you got that I don't? <laughs> I don't have a spirit of fear. <laughs> Nor did I scream. Can I get it again? Sorry, man. <laughs> but I have the Holy Spirit. I have Holy Spirit. I got that. And with Holy Spirit, I got power. <laughs> with Holy Spirit, I got love. With Holy Spirit, I got self control, a sound mind. I'm not freaking out because somebody made a decision somewhere that is against me. I'm not freaking out because something didn't work out because of somebody's stupidity. I'm not freaking out because the devil raised his head and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm not freaking out because somebody came and stole everything I got. I'm not freaking out because I got Holy Spirit. I got God. And with God, I've got power. I got love. I got self control. Amen. I'm not going to believe the lie of the devil. Nothing's going to go right. You're not good enough. You'll not get healed. You'll lose everything. You're bad. You're this. You're that. Come on, he tells us all day. And we have to overcome that. And the way we overcome that is by the word of God. Amen. He will condemn, condemn, condemn you and try and stop you at every turn. Condemnation is not of God. So if you're feeling condemned about something, it's not God. God will convict you. Okay, I won't condemn you. He'll convict you. I shouldn't be doing this. This is not right. I'm, I'm, I'm not at the level I should be. Uh, I should do this. Not condemnation. 
conviction, which will bring a desire to do the things. Because why? You are submitted to Him. You are in Him. You are with Him. Amen. We've got to trust God. We've got to recognize who we are. We've got to clean out our wrong believing. Our wrong thinking. I think our, our pastor used to say it. Uh, our stinking thinking. Okay, stinking thinking, getting us stinking results. No, no, we're going to start changing that. And we're going to start renewing our minds to the word of God. We're going to start renewing everything and looking at everything and taking the time. Taking the time. I remember one uh, preacher said, everybody doesn't have time to do things right the first time, but they all find the time to go back and have to correct. So, do it right the first time. Take the time. What do I believe? What does God say? I want to know God. I want to know Him. How am I going to get to know Him? I'm going to get to know Him through His Word. I'm going to get to know Him through His family. I'm going to get to know Him by, by stepping out and, and trusting in Him. Amen. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. By Holy Spirit. We undervalue the power and the significance of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Where you go, he goes. Where you go, he goes. Wherever you go, you take God with you. You take Holy Spirit with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. So that's why when people pray, come Holy Spirit. I'm like, he never left. <laughs> Please come. No, 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 no. He's been with you all the time. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. Okay. God, I want more of you. I've given you everything. And there's another one I'm just going to hit on just because I want to, because I can. <laughs> I want the double portion. Double portion of what? You're not Elijah or Elisha. You're not Old Testament. You've been given the full portion. Amen. The fullness of the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. There's no double. There's no two Holy Spirits. There's no more that God can give you. Okay. There's no more. You've got it. You've got it. It's yours. It's there. You've got it, and he's done it. So connect the two. Connect the two. God's already done it. I've already got it. So now I'm able. I'm able to step into what God has done, what God has prepared for my life, what God has. I'm able to step into the blessing and be a blessing. I'm able to step into what, what desires he's put for me and, and in me. I'm able to step into the plans and purposes of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have received the power. You know, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. So we've got the Holy Spirit. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit and we need to be witnesses. Witnesses is something that somebody can see and see. So I see you and I see God. I see and I see. I see you and I see God. Because you've got Holy Spirit in you, we can see God moving through you. Use me today, Lord. Let that be your prayer every morning. Use me today. God, what do you have for me? Hallelujah. Don't be overcome and overburdened by your problems that you're facing. You know, when the problem's too big, stop looking at it. And go look at the word. When the problem is too big, you're focusing too much on the problem. And now that problem has become so big in your life that you cannot overcome it. No matter what it is. No matter what it is. Because all things are possible to those who believe. So I can overcome everything. I can overcome everything. It just takes the, 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 the faith the size of a mustard seed. And I can tell that mountain, get up and move. Up and move. You know, we see those uh, superhero movies with their fingers and their points and the person. Whatever, the whole building or whatever moves up. We superheroes. We have the power of God. Amen. And we've got to walk in it. We've got to walk in it. It's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, in Greek, it, the word is the dynamis of God, the strength, the power, and the ability. That's what we have. The strength, the power, and the ability. But what are you saying? I'm like God. Well, you were created in His image. 
you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Why did he do that? So that you can do what he can do. Because God, whatever God is going to do here on this earth, he's going to do through people. So it can either be you or somebody else. Your choice. God's not going to move outside of people. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do through people. Lord, I want to be the blessing. I want to be the one that blesses. I want to be the one that, that puts in another million into the, into the building fund. Come on. Last week, or last week, two weeks ago when I was here, and you know, just, just God gave me a vision. He showed me something in my spirit about the building that you're going to get, about the place that is going to be home to Eternity Church, Orange County. Amen. It is going to be a place of revival. It is going to be a place of the outpouring of God. It is going to be a place, hallelujah, where people will walk in and they will encounter the presence of God. Bam. It's going to be a place. And you guys need to get ready for this, okay? Because we're not going to only do church on a Sunday. It's going to be every day. It's going to be every day. There's going to be a service happening every day. There's going to be lines outside. Why? Because people know that they can encounter God there. Because people know that they can encounter the solutions there. Why? Because Eternity Church OC is not someone who looks for the physical solution. But this is a family that seeks God for the spiritual solution. So therefore, when we have a problem, we don't just look at the surface, but we go to the root and we get the, the hallelujah, we get the solution, we get the answer from God in order to deal with it all. Amen. Hallelujah. And they're going to know that. They're going to know that. They're going to be coming in. They're going to be coming in and saying, I need this. Help me. And then they're going to be worshiping and praising God. And they're going to be bringing their friends. Hallelujah. Why? Because God has touched their life. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be that. But it's going to need all of us. It's not going to just take two people and a worship leader. It's going to take all of us. We are the church. We are the church, and we are, we are the most powerful force in the universe outside of God. Well, we are God. We work. We are not God, but I mean, God works through us. It is the most powerful entity. That's us, the church. The most powerful entity. We can't be sitting back, guys. I really, I want to encourage you, but I don't want to just encourage you. So I want you to take this, and I want you to be this. We need to be the church. We need to be the truth. We need to be the power. We need to be the peace. We need to be the love. We need to do that. Going out next week and sharing God with others, putting on this whole event, food, music, this. I mean, that's love. That's what love does. Love goes and love does. Love also stands up for what's right because you love other people. You know they're going to suffer. We are that. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus says. He says, when, that, when, when his disciples asked him, what is the greatest commandment in the Lord? Jesus said to him, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it. This is Matthew 22, uh, verse 36 and 37. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments have all the, hang all the law and the prophets. Okay. And I'm, I just have to, because that's the New King James Version, but I have to read it out of the, the Passion Translation, sorry. Um, hallelujah. Are you guys good? Yeah. You still with me? Praise God. Praise God. You know what? You just got to make a choice. What do you want? What do you want? Do you want the things of God or not? Do you want the things of God or not? And you got to make that decision. You got to make that decision. I want God. Well, if you want God, connect with God. Receive what God has. Declare what God says. Teacher, which great, which commandment is in the law is the greatest? And Jesus answered him, love. Love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, and with every thought that is within you. Whew, that sounds so much better than just love the Lord your God. <laughs> Amen. Doesn't that open it up? You shall love the Lord your God with, okay, that's NKJ. <laughs> you shall love the Lord your God 
with every passion of your heart. Don't let anything else take the place of God in your life. And people do that. Oh, no, but what are you talking about? No, God is first. God is first. Yeah, but you know what? My friends called me out, and there's a football game happening now. They've got tickets, and I'm not going to make it to church on Sunday or on the midweek or whatever time. Oh, um, you know, uh, there's this happening. There's that happening. There's this I'm collecting. You know, we, we become we're great collectors, some of us, and our art collections or this. And, well, that's important. And, and that, that we start putting these things before God. Uh, there's a lot of things that we do, and we, we just got to be careful that nothing is put before God, that every passion, we love the Lord of God with every passion of your heart. When you do that, what happens? Your desires change. Well, how am I going to do this? Love him, he'll help you, okay? When you love him, you know, it's like when you fall in love, right? Praise God, it's the most awesome feeling. I haven't stopped feeling it for the last nine years. (laughs) Amen. When you fall in love, there's nothing you won't do for that person. You, you do crazy things. I remember I lived in, well, we still do. I live in uh, the, the northernmost part of Los Angeles, uh, just by Ventura County. And she grew up in OC. So when we were first dating, I came to surprise her for lunch. It took, <laughs> it took me three hours to drive down. But nothing stopped me. Nothing was going to stop me from coming to take her to lunch, to be there. I'm in love. I love her. I want to show her how cool I am, how good I am. I want to do. I want to make her happy. I want to bless her. I want to give her everything I can. Amen. Nothing's going to stop me. A year after marriage, I'm like, honey, we're not driving anywhere three hours for lunch. Uh, No. (laughs) No, praise God. Uh, (laughs) Because she's with me, so I don't have to drive three hours to her. Uh, but seriously, that, that's the thing. We, there's nothing we won't do. There we go and we do these. Why? Because we are in love. And that's where we've got to get to with God. We've got to be in that place of love where whatever you tell me, Father, I'll do. Tell me to go to Greece. Because honestly, mama, when I was younger, my mother said to me, you're going to come to Greece. And you're going to minister in Greece. I said, heck no. I said, you go, and I'll pay for you. I'll support you financially. You know, because we, we built this house in my dad's village where he's from, and the house finished, and she said, she announced, ministry headquarters for Greece. It's like in 1987. I said, your ministry headquarters? I said, I'll say, but then the Lord said, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, even six months before God gave it, you know, we received the call to go to Greece. We had been going up and down to Greece and ministering every six months and doing some leadership stuff there. And I've been talking, and God started stirring, because that's how it works, okay? He starts stirring in, in you, and praise God, you, you're sensitive enough to it. And I was kind of sensitive to it, and he's stirring in me about going to Greece. And we're walking in Greece, and I said to Esther, I said, honey, could you ever imagine being here, you know, long term and being here? She looked at me, she said, over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> now, Greece is wonderful to go on holiday. The best place in the world to go on holiday. To live there, it's a whole nother story. Amen. God literally had to deal with my heart, walking down the streets and seeing them. And he says, I love them too, because I'll just be like, you know, I grew up, I'm Greek. I grew up around Greeks, and I grew up a believer. So I was always persecuted. I was always the odd man out. I was always just, you, 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 you're crazy, you're fanatic, you're this, you're that. Always put down. And so it, there had been some resentment that had, that had uh, developed inside of me. I'm like, you guys can all go to hell. I don't care. Uh, sorry, with all, with all due respect, okay? You know, you don't want to hear me. You don't want to hear the word. You don't want to do all of that. And I know it sounds harsh. God's dealt with me. Praise God. He sent me there. But then I had to walk, and I had to be like, as these, these people are walking towards you, these people are always putting you down. These people are telling you you're crazy. These people are telling you you're a heretic. These people who want to split on you. These people who want to, let me tell you, when we had our first service, we did it in a hotel like this. And it just happened to be the day that they had national examinations. And 
in the national examination, they didn't do them at the school. They did them in, in they had to get some hotel uh, places and, and the parents are waiting outside because Greek parents are very clean. And so there might be like some Jewish parents. And so outside in the waiting halls, it's just loaded with parents while their, their precious children are inside, you know, writing these examinations and they're sitting there and they're suffering more than the kids are. Anyway, and so they see us preparing, they see us doing, and they start asking, so what are you doing? And we start telling them, oh, we're doing church. We, what church? What? And all of a sudden, you could actually see the hair on the back of their necks rising. You could actually see the hate and the anger and, and, and the persecution. And, the, uh, ooh. and I was like, whoa. That was like, okay, day one of church. Praise God. But God put it in our hearts that we had to walk in love because he'll do that. And because we love him, he changes our heart. He gives us the ability to do what he's called us to do and what we need to do. So praise God. He has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. But he has given us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Who gives us mighty power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't need to do this in my own strength. I don't need to do this in, in my power. Because most of us are looking at what God wants us to do and thinking, how am I going to do it? He's given you those ideas. He's given you those solutions. He's given you everything, and you're thinking, how am I going to do it? You're not on your own. You're not doing it in your power. But Lord, these people, hallelujah, how am I, how, they, they've been persecuting me. They, they, they don't want me. They, 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 they think I'm a, I'm a heretic. Don't worry. My love is sufficient. My love is sufficient. His love is sufficient for you to talk to those family members that have been calling you crazy. Those family members that have been putting you out and stopping you and, and just telling you all those wonderful things that our family members tell us. And self-control or sound mind, which is peace. Why? Because we know that everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. All we need to do is just stick with God. So today, I want to encourage you, get closer. Get closer to God. Know His love. Know His power. Be a vessel. Go pray for people. Go pray for people. What's stopping you? I had a friend of mine who used to say, well, I'm thinking, what happens if it doesn't work? Well, what happens if it does? Amen. What happens if it does? You know, go. Pray. Go pray for people. Don't be afraid. You carry the power of God. Believe it. Oh, but they need faith. And if I look at it technically, well, they need faith. And if they don't have faith, well, then there's no point in me praying for them. The very fact that they let you pray for them, that's faith enough. Okay? The very fact that they let you pray for them, that's faith enough. That's them just saying, yes, okay. That's enough. They don't need to know the word. They don't need to know everything. That's faith enough. And then you believe. Believe who you are in Him. Believe what you have. Believe in God and see God. See God move. It's our time. We are, the church is what's holding back the forces of Satan and evil in this world. We see it. And, you know, especially with everything that's happened over the last year. I know with us, you know, all of a sudden everybody was like, is this the end times? Is this it? Or, or uh, you know, is Jesus coming tomorrow? And so I had to do a big study of Revelation, which isn't my favorite thing to look at, but anyway, I did a big study. And in there is very clear, the church is holding back. The church is stopping the works of Satan. It would be much worse right now if it wasn't for you and I. So let's be the church. Let's rise up. Let's be strong in our faith. Let's be strong in what we believe. Let's walk it out. Let's not take a break. I'm not taking a holiday. Oh, well, in this situation, I'm a Christian. In this situation, well, I'm just not going to talk about it. Well, it might offend someone. Offend everyone. But in love, don't try and be offensive. That's the difference. Nothing worse than someone coming in and trying to be offensive. Well, I know this is going to bug you, so I'm going to say it. No, I'm cheering out of love. Out of love. Now, if you happen to get offended, I'm sorry. But I love you enough to tell you, no matter what your reaction to me is, no matter what you feel. Amen. And I have a peace, a, a sound mind. <sighs> Everything's going to be all right. 
because God will never leave me nor forsake me. God is with me. God is for me. Who can be against me? Sickness may come. Bad news may come. Pain may come. But everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right because His Word says so. And He is faithful. And may every man be a liar and God be true. Amen. So this morning, I want to encourage you in your faith. I want to encourage you in your relationship with God. And it's the most valuable and important thing you have. Put it first place. And don't allow any fear to come in and stop you. Amen. So right now, I'd just like everybody just to stand where you are. Father God, I lift up each and every single person that is here today. And everybody connected online. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your anointed upon, anointing upon each and every single one of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to have your way. Do what you need to do. Lead us, guide us, show us, convict us. Help us to walk in the fullness. For Lord, this is our desire, to see the fullness of you. Right now, some of you are, you know, you're facing some hardships and that's, I don't need to be prophetic to say that. But you need to start taking your eyes off the problem and putting your eyes on the Word of God. It won't fail. It works every time. Just work it. Allow it to work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for, for courage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone here is dealing with, with, with a great mountain of debt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? I heard something out of the message translation this week. And it says, all debts are canceled. God said so. Amen. So I want to just tell you that. Get ready for supernatural debt cancellation when you're following what God says. Hallelujah. When you're believing and you're trusting Him. Amen. God said so. God said so. All debt is canceled. Say amen. So I just want, don't worry about it. Stop thinking about it and trust God. And don't add to it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just pray for healing. Hallelujah for, for Pastor Jared, for his hand. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If anybody else has got any pain, just put your hand. I don't need to touch you. I don't need to be there. Wherever it is, if you need healing this morning, hallelujah. The Word of God says, where two or more come in agreement concerning anything, it shall be. Amen. I'm going to come in agreement with you for your healing. Hallelujah. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, you are but a name. Multiple sclerosis, you are but a name. Flu, you are but a name. COVID, you are but a name. Hallelujah, you are but a name. And you shall all bow down to the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And right now with every head bowed and every eye closed, if there's anybody here or anybody watching online who does not have a relationship with God, who does not know this God that I've been speaking about this morning, who is, doesn't have the Holy Spirit and the power and the love and the sound mind, and you want that. You want a relationship with God. You want to know God. You want to have God in your life. You want to connect to your true purpose. If that's you, I want to give you an opportunity to have that, to connect with God. God loved you so much and loves you so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus. And He said, whoever believes on Him shall not suffer, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Life without Jesus is perishing. Life without hope is perishing. God doesn't want that for you. That's not His plan for your life. He has a plan for you. Right now, wherever you are, if you know that, you know, there's more to this life than what I have. There's more, there's more, there's more. Yes, I'm here to tell you there is. There's a relationship with God. You know it. You know there's something missing. 
It's God that's missing. He loves you. Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another minute. If you walked out of this building and a car had to knock you over and you had to lose your life and you don't know where you're going to end up, whether it's heaven or hell, you can make sure right now. Heaven and hell are both real places. They are very real. And everybody who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will be in heaven with God. And everybody who rejects Him just won't make it. But not because God doesn't want you there. God wants you there. But He gives you the choice. He's given you free will. So today I want you to exercise that free will. Don't wait another minute. It might be too late. You don't know what time you've got. Don't wait. Don't wait. Right now, choose God. Right now, choose life. Right now, choose the blessing. Right now, choose relationship. So if that's you, just put up your hand and say, pray for me. I I I want God. I want God. If you're watching online, you can put your hand up online and say, that's me. That's me. You can participate in this if it's you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody else, heads bowed, eyes closed. No one looking around. This is a precious moment. You be praying. You be praying for those. Pray. Pray that people get healed, that people get saved, that people know God. Amen. Let me pray with you right now. Repeat this after me, okay? Whether you're watching online and all of us over here, let's all just pray this prayer to encourage everybody. Father God, thank you for making a way for me. Forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my life as Lord and Savior. Thank you for paying the price. Father, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for making me brand new. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.